Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The elders of Israel being the apostles, and the elders of the great millstone that rule well. Shalom, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. In the Holy Spirit of Truth. And the title of this video is going to be, I Shall Not Want. I Shall Not Want. Or I might title it, yeah, that's it. I Shall Not Want. Okay. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. Bernie Mac quote from Friday. Before that nigga went and committed... Goddamn adultery with the uh, with the midget's wife. I forget the midget's name on the movie. Uh, something Parker, right? Mr. Parker. It had to be Mr. Parker because his wife was Miss Parker. She was an adulterous demon. She in the front. She what do you say? She knows she doing with them little ass shorts on. Miss Parker. Miss Parker. Then the husband came home. And said, ba baby, we was just we was just praying. <laughs> man, we need salvation, man. For real, our people's wicked as hell. It's funny in the movie, but shit like that actually goes down. Like the pastor really be a straight demon. All right, the la the pastor really be a straight demon. You know, it's getting worse. You know, you got niggas like Eddie Eddie Long. Right, he he was a straight up pet pedo. And more cases of that of uh, so called black pastors is uh. The impedos, man. But anyways, let's get to it. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 23, in verse 1. I'm going to, Lord's will, I'm going to buy another Bible like this. Some of the pages came out. Like, a couple of pages came out. Lord's will, I'm going to buy another Bible. I really mess with this Bible. But, con, anyways, uh, the subtitle says, Psalm of the Divine Shepherd. A Psalm of David. So, we have a divine shepherd, okay? A shepherd is is what? A leader of sheep. Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai is our leader. He's our guide. He's our shepherd. And the shepherd makes sure that the sheep is taken care of. A shepherd makes sure that no harm is done to his sheep. Before we even start, because the Spirit's telling me, To get this precept in the gospel. I just need to find it. I'm actually excited to be back in this Bible. But this is Matthew chapter 10. Is it John 10 then? Yeah, this is St. John chapter 10 and verse 11. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. He came on this earth and he presented his body as a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. He's the good shepherd. Verse 12, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep, whose own the sheep are not, see if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. And a lot of these guys are hirelings. So the good shepherd is Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. That's our divine shepherd. But the divine shepherd has raised up shepherds on this earth in the form of the apostles, in the form of the elders. The prophets, the teachers. In the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, the Lord said that he will give us shepherds that would not leave us lacking. Let me grab it in this sword. Jeremiah chapter 23 in verse. I'll start at one. Woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. 
saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, power of Israel against the against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord. So we see that taking place. We see the Lord punishing the so-called pastors, so-called prophets, camp heads, chief priests, bishops, deacons, so on and so forth, man. And we're not exempt. We must continue to examine ourselves. Okay? The Lord is punishing the leaders, the, the heads. Right? Um, what's that? I'm having a, a brain fart. This is Ezekiel 9. He said that he will punish the ancient. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 9. No, say it shall start at his house. Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 6, it says, Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. The ancient men which were before the house. Now I'm going to look in the margin and see what they have for that ancient. For that word ancient. Ezekiel 9 and 6. The elders. Alright. When you go into that word ancients. The elders. When you go into the blue letter to say uh, leaders. Let's look it up in the blue letter. Just for edification's sake. And that's why I like this Bible. Because it has a um, it has a margin. It has precepts. It has definitions. It has um, thick pages. You know, pretty thick pages compared to some of the Bibles that you find. I'm a Lord's will. Then my father gifted this to me. Lord's will, I'm going to have to get a couple of these. Adawan Rataza. This is Ezekiel ch chapter 9 and verse 6 going into that word ancient. Right? Then they begin at the at the ancient. It goes back to the Hebrew Zakwan. Right? Elder. So that's that's pretty much that's that's all I'm seeing on that. I'm not really seeing no any other definitions. Con. Let's read another translation. Again, I'm just flowing in the spirit. Ezekiel 9 and 6. Kill them all. This is in the NLT. Old and young girls and women. See, the Lord's not playing, man. The Lord's not playing at all. And little children, but do not touch anyone with the mark. That goes back to the Hebrew word, the wa, which means to be exempt from judgment. It says, begin right here at the temple. So they began... Here it goes right here. So they began by killing the 70 leaders. So it's talking about the leaders. All right. The leaders of the Lord's people. Judgment is beginning. Okay. Guys that's, you know, calling themselves shepherd. You know, that may not be calling themselves shepherds. But if you're a chief priest, that would make you a shepherd. If you're a head of a camp, that would make you a shepherd. If you call yourself a, a prophet and you're teaching on the internet and you're out there on the highways and byways teaching, then you're a shepherd. You're a pastor, and the Lord said he's visiting the pastors that's scattering the Lord's sheep. And you can scatter the Lord's sheep by teaching incorrectly. The Lord don't play about that. The Lord don't play about his word. In the book of Job, he said that, um, in, in the book of Job, he said he was mad at Job's friends because they weren't speaking the things right concerning him. This is back in Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 3. It says, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whither I have driven them. The remnant. He's gathering the remnant of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The elect. The chosen. He's not gathering all Israel. Out of all countries, whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds. And they shall be fruitful and increase. 
and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord Yahweh so the Lord has given us shepherds he's the ultimate shepherd he's the divine shepherd the good shepherd that has given his life for the sheep but he has also set up shepherds on this earth who's doing the same thing as far as what giving our life for the sheep presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice starting with the apostles and the elders on down these men have truly given their lives to serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai all right and how are they serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by serving his sheep by feeding his flock Okay, Apostle Tahar has been in the truth longer than he's been in the world. Okay, I believe the Apostle Tahar came into the truth at 25. He's been in the truth damn near 40 years. Same with um, the rest of the apostles, man. Those men have sacrificed greatly and for some upstart to try to come against them and try to teach them and try to act like he knows more than them the same dude that learned from them either directly and actually directly and indirectly I'm speaking about Hassad the weirdo it's just completely disrespectful and judgment's gonna come come see him that Ezekiel 9 has said kill them all right start at the temple start at the ones that know that they're Israelites right start at the leaders Start out with the ones that have a following. Okay? Anyways. Let's go back to um, Jer uh, Psalms chapter 23 and verse 1. That was kind of like a whole whole side note. The, the main topic is, the topic is what I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not lack. Right? This is Psalms 23 and 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay? Going into that word once here in the uh just I'm just using the margin on this Bible, checking it out. It says to lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He's gonna take care as long as we doing what he asked us to do, right? As long as we're serving him, he's gonna take care of us. As it says in the book of Second Chronicles. This is Second Chronicles chapter. 15 and verse 2nd Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 1 and the spirit of Yahweh came upon Azariah the son of Obed and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him hear ye me this is the spirit of the most high the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai speaking through Azariah a prophet ex to exhort Asa the king it says, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if ye and if ye be slaki, and if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. So as long as we don't forsake Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and we continue to serve him, we continue to seek him and obey him to the best of our ability, then he will not forsake us. As it says in the book of Hebrews, I believe it's the 13th chapter, that he will not leave us. Let's, let's, let's read that. Matter of fact, Hebrews might be missing in this Bible. That might be the book that's missing. It is. Because. Oh, no, I got it. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. That word conversation is conduct. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm I'm messing with this Bible. Lord's will. Today I'm gonna have to order me one of these if I can if I can find one online. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness, our conduct, right? And be content with such things as ye have. And, and you know, as men, especially in this truth, you know, and knowing that this world belongs to us, it can make us ambitious all right we're already as men we're already naturally ambitious 
All right. But just wanting more is is, is natural for a man on this earth to just want more for himself. OK. And to. I hate to say it like this, but to chase the bag, to chase success, to conquer, that's natural in a man. OK. But we must learn to be content with what the Lord gives to us. It says the scriptures say Paul said it and Timothy says godliness with contentment is great gain. So there's nothing wrong with wanting more for yourself and there's nothing wrong with building um, financially, increasing financially. There's nothing wrong with taking a promotion or starting a side hustle a little bit. There's nothing wrong with those things, but keeping everything in its proper perspective and not allowing those things to take away from our true business that our father has entrusted us with. Okay. It says, so, so keeping our eye single on the prize and not getting caught up in the ambition of this world because Everything that we see is all temporary. Our current estate, our current position in this world, in this life, it's all temporary and it'll soon come to an end. So we must not invest, overly invest into the carnal things. We must not overly invest into this world because this world hastes the fast to pass away. Our affection is above. Our affection is in heaven. Matthew 6, 6 chapter says, store up your treasures upon, no, it says, store not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do of corrupt, but store up your treasures in heaven where thieves do not break through and steal, where moth and rust do not corrupt. That's where our true investment is at. In that investment, we have we already hit the jackpot. We've got to be able to withdraw from our inheritance. Okay. That's what we must remain focused on. It says, and be content with such things as ye have for he for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai will not forsake us. He will not leave us as long as we don't leave him, as long as we don't forsake him. As long as we continue to keep him as the apple of his of our eye, he will keep us as the apple of his eye. Okay? Going back into, where is we at? Psalms chapter 23 and verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not lack. All right. The scriptures say that he will give every needful. Sirach chapter 39 and verse 33. It says, all the works of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Shai, are good. And he, even when the Lord does evil, it's good. Right? It's, it, or it's just. It's righteous. It's without flaw. Okay? All the works of the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season. He will give us everything we need when we need it. Sometimes we're lacking on certain things. And it's, and it's just because at that time we don't need it. We may think we need it, but the Lord knows, nah, you need to learn a lesson. You need to learn patience. So I'm not going to give it to you right away. Okay? I'm going to prolong it and force you to ask multiple times. Force you to pray and fast about it. Force you to cry and beg for it. To be patient for it. And all these different attributes are increased. And then, because that's really what we need. We need more faith. We need to call and cry and lean upon Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai more. So we find ourselves in certain situations to do so. But he still gives us what we need. 
Okay? When we need it. Every needful thing in due season. Salaki, I'm drinking some tea. I don't want it to get lukewarm. Nobody likes anything that's lukewarm, right? Shit, fat. This is Psalms 23 and 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me. Okay? Then that's the duty of a shepherd, right? To lead. To guard. To guide. Can't have nothing better. A divine shepherd. Let's go back into that John. I think there was something. St. John chapter 10, chapter uh, 10 and verse 12. It says, "For he, but he that is a hireling, which a lot of these guys are, okay, just here for the money, here to grift, right? And not sh and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not see if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. But the Lord is not going to leave his sheep. He is not going to leave us. He will not forsake us. He said, I am with you unto the end of the world. OK. Um, that's pretty much it on that psalm. It's, only, it's a short psalm, so we'll finish reading it. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why will I not fear evil? Because Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is my shepherd. He is leading me as I'm in this darkness. Dark valley. He is guarding me. He is protecting me as I am in this low land, this wicked, vile society. Therefore, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Which is this word. This is our comfort and our affliction. Okay? He is with us. And we are in the flesh and we still deal with fleshly emotions. But the rod and the staff, the word, the faith, the spirit, it fights off those carnal, adverse emotions and thoughts. Okay? Okay? So, this wasn't meant to be a long lesson. This is the book of, got a couple more precepts I want to hit though. This is Psalms chapter 34, and I'll start at verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Shai. Man, uh, this is tough. This is a very tough chapter. Let's start at verse 6. Psalms 34, verse 6. This poor man cried. And the Lord Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. So he hears us, man. We got we to gotta have faith just because we don't get our petitions answered right away. And we may pray and at times our prayer doesn't happen right away. It doesn't mean it wasn't heard. Okay. That just means we got to keep asking, keep believing. Keep praying, keep examining ourselves, and he's going to give us what we need when we truly need it. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Yahweh Basham, what did that psalm say? He is with me. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is with us. He has angels guarding us, guiding us. Right? He is our shepherd. We shall not want. We shall not fear no evil. We're guarded by a heavenly host. Oh, taste and see that the Lord Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is good. 
Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Trust, believe, faith. Blessed is that man that has those things. O oh, fear the Lord Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. There's no want. There's no lack. To them that fear Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. He will give us every needful thing in due season. A good shepherd feeds his sheep. In the time of famine, he will feed us, said, My servant shall eat when everybody else is hungry. Psalm, uh, Isaiah 65. My servant shall drink when everybody else is thirsty. My servant shall rejoice when everybody else is lamenting and weeping and gnashing their teeth. He will take care of his servants, his sheep, his sons, his children. The ones that trust in him, the ones that fear him, the ones that's obedient unto him. In the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, the scriptures say, um, how does it go? I will be a guide to them that keep my precepts. I will be a guide to them that keep my precepts. In the, in the book of Revelations, the third chapter says that because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which cometh upon the whole world to try them. We must keep what's written. We must obey the precepts. Right? Holy. What manner of man ought you to be in all holy and godly conversation? That word conversation, again, it means conduct. Our conduct must be holy. Our conduct must be godly. How do we have holy conduct? By following what's written in the Holy Bible. How do we live godly or godlike? By listening to God's word, the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. And he'll take care of the rest. Verse 10 The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, shall not want. Any good thing. They that seek the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in truth and in sincerity shall not want, shall not lack any good thing. Going back into that Sirach 39, the Lord will give every needful thing in due season. All right. Everything that we need will be given to us as long as we continue to seek him. Like that chronicle said, if you seek me, I will be with you. But if you forsake me, I will forsake you. This is a beautiful chapter. But let's continue on. Um, I want to read Matthew 6 to couple that, to go with that. St. Matthew. This is a beautiful Bible, man. I need to get me another one, Lord, as well. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. It says, I'm going to start at verse 31. I'm going to start at verse 30. Matthew 6 and verse 30, wherefore, if Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. If Yahweh so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So he's saying that what he's going to take care, he takes care of the grass, Right? He takes care of birds. Um, there's another scripture. I'm surprised they don't have it. I'm surprised they don't have it precept in the margin. But I'm, I'm gonna just look it up. I know the word toil is in it. It's the same chapter. Matthew 6 and verse 28. It says, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. 
No, that's not it. That's not it. Forgive me. So look for this precept. It says how they don't work. Ravens, not a sparrow, it's a raven. Here it is. Matthew 6 and verse 26. A couple, couple verses over. Blessed is he that reads. All I have to do is look up, right? Like Brother Matthias said, read up, read down. Matthew 6 and verse 26, it says, I'll start at verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. I'm looking in the margin, and when it says, take no thought for your life, it says, do not worry about. Therefore, I say unto you, do not worry about your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. We don't have to worry about this. We don't have to carnally. Oh, that's that's the spirit. That's the spirit. I wasn't even thinking about this. It's the spirit. I screenshot this earlier from End Time Headline News. It says, uh, this is just the title of the article. It says, five reasons why you should be prepping like crazy right now. There's people actually prepping like crazy. There's people that's actually going crazy prepping. <laughs> We don't need to do that. We don't need to invest in a bunker. There's nothing wrong with getting some extra um some extra things, some extra items when you're at the grocery store. Nothing wrong with that. But we're not invested into that. We're not trusting and putting our faith into that. Okay? We're not worried about that. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yeah, they sow not, neither do they reap. They don't clock in. Okay? So when we lose our jobs... For this truth, when we lose our job for not taking the MOTB, all right, or the new laws that come out, whatever the case may be, the Lord will make a way. We must believe in that. And we must analyze our own lives and see how he has always come through. He always makes a way. Right? It says, or what ye shall drink, it says, uh, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on, is not the life more than me, and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, the divine shepherd, he feedeth them, right? Are ye not much better than they? Are we not much better than a fowl of the air? Are we not the sons of Yahweh Ba'asham Yahushai, the sons and the daughters for the few sisters that's watching? Are we not the children of Israel, the princes of the power and the princesses, right? His children, his servants. When I pray, I ask the Lord to hear the prayer of his servant. And hear the prayer of his son, Shemai Hapala Shalbanka Wai Baka. Hear the prayer of your son and servant, right? Banka is your son. Ibadka is your servant, right? Ibad is servant. Ka at the end makes it your. It says, and that's the point on that. Let me jump down to uh, verse 30. It says, Wherefore, if Yahweh, 
we are right there. Verse 31, it says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Right? After all these things, the Gentiles seek. The ones that are without faith. The ones that are without the divine shepherd. They're prepping like crazy. They're making sure they have food and drink and rain and shelter for the times to come. And all that's just going to fall through. That's not going to save them from the times that we coming into a time like no other. Right? It says, for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He knows that we need to eat. He knows that we got little children. So on and so forth. And he'll take care of those things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added on to you. And everything else will be taken care of. Okay? We shall not want. It says in famine, in famine, we shall laugh. It says that the Lord will satisfy us. This is, uh, it says that he shall satisfy us in famine. I was about to type it in. Or I typed it in and it didn't show up. It says that he shall, we shall be satisfied in, in famine. Psalms 37 and 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. They will be fed. They won't lack food. Famine means to be hungry. Okay? But they are, they will be satisfied. They'll be full. They'll be fed. This is all pretty much stemming off of uh, the Elder Yashawambi. He did a video called Provision. Okay? And how provision... And he mentions this a lot. Um, how provision is already prepared for us. The widow woman and Elisha or Elijah. That was our whole life's purpose. To feed Elijah in the time of famine. Last precept. Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 27, it says, verse 26, it says, As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. For I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary, as for the servants, key word. Key word. Be not weary for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh is right around the corner. That's why people are prepping like crazy. Because trouble and heaviness is coming. Lack of bread is coming. Great evils and miseries is coming. But we need be not weary. Right? Be not weary for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. But thou shalt be merry and have abundance. We shall not want. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord. My hand shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. Lord willing, that was edifying, uplifting, and exhorting. Want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachorash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rachachorash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. double honest to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Ruel. Shalom which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom Achim, brothers, keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draweth nigh and redemption is near than we believe. Shalom.